Hello and welcome to Modular in a Week. In this episode we are actually going to make two modules. Uh, they are both uh, passive multiples, so they are for splitting the signal. And the reason we are doing two is because they are super super simple to make and there's no uh, PCB that we need to solder. It's only jacks and one switch on one of the passive multiples. So let me show you what these are first and then let's build them. Right, so passive multiple is a really simple module. It is technically a bunch of inputs, outputs, jacks uh, connected together. And if we do a search for passive multiple module, we get loads of modules. The DOP for A100 2 is one of them. Not here, but it's a good reference. Uh, and here is one that is similar. And you can see the, the PCB is technically just holes for the jacks to be set. Uh, there's no there's no circuitry at all except the jacks and different um, factories do different ways here we have one two three uh, uh, two of uh, two modules with or one module with two parts one two three and one two three and the same you can see on this one here also one two three and here is also well this one is different in design but it's still one two three here is actually something similar to what i'm going to make with a switch in the middle so we can have either two one two three or we can have one uh, one one two seven uh, also, there are some that actually manage to get nine jacks in instead. Here, the Bastel one has nine jacks, so one to eight in, in this case. But they're all the same behind, no matter, no circuitry at all. So let's... Uh, solder one of these together and look what we can do with it. So the first passive multiple we'll do is super simple. Um, built on the Dupfer or similar modules. So in the Dupfer module they have just a soldering point or a jumper on the back side. I choose to add a switch in the middle like this and this will allow me to switch between 1 7 so 1 in 7 out or 2 1 2 3 um, just by soldering here so now we just need 8 jacks and soldering this together I think will be much easier if we Put everything on here. And then we solder all the grounds together and all the pins on this side together with uh, one pin and all the pins on this side together together with a middle pin. So that will be switchable between those four together and those four together or all eight together. That was the ground wire. And now we do the same thing with the with the tip wire and we just terminate them in, in the switch here. Uh, 
uh, one more thing before we put it in the rack. So the laser panels I use is quite flexible. Um, it's the laser he has is not that powerful, so um, I some material is quite thin, and this material is that too. So uh, I've made a lot of these things that I can add to the side of the panels that gives it rigidity even in the in this plane. Uh, this is a bit special. I had to file away a bit just for the switch here so it gets flush with the edge. And then we just add some either hot glue or CA glue to hold this in place. Uh, so what this, this does is you connect one cable here. For example, if you want a CV signal, we take one from over here. And then we want to control two things with this. So we connect two other cables and we can connect them over here to the the actual VCA, some power, and then both the actual VCAs will um, be powered from this one connection point. And the point of the switch is that you can do like that, and so now only one is, and we flip the switch and both are. So you can have all eight connected together to one output. You can abuse this by connecting and using it as a passive unbuffered mixer that you just connect all the inputs in and to one output and that would work. Uh, it would probably just as the unbuffered mixer alter the signal a bit. Here you see that uh, they go down because there's too much drawing power from that one CV. So they go down and then they light up again when we only drive these two instead of driving the CV in on the reverse avalanche and the AA CVCO as well. The second multiple I found on uh, one of the Swedish analog sympathizers homepage, uh, Niklas Ranbay. And I'll put the link in the description to this page because he's got a lot of really fun modules. And uh, so the one that I will make is the passive multiple again. And this one, as you can see, has two rows. And yeah, we did the same uh, kind of uh, graphic to uh, explain it. Once you put something in the input, you that will multiply to all the outputs down the line until you put something else into an input. So if I put something here, that would stop this multiple to just become a 1 to 2, and then this one would become a 1 to 6. I'll explain this more later. Uh, the schematics looks like this, uh, where this is the tip of the uh, jack. So you have an input to the uh, input jack and that goes to the output jack of that one. And then it goes to the, I, I call it the input or, or the connected jack. So when there's nothing connected here, this one is connected to this one, so it just 
moves the signal to the next output and then to the next output. And as soon as you connect the uh, cable here, the this breaker is or this connection is broken and uh, the signal doesn't continue from here. So a really simple schematics. Um, you just need to keep in mind that you connect the correct uh, pins on all the jacks. I had some trouble with that in the beginning. Uh, but uh, let's look at how to connect this together. So this next one has a crazy amount of jacks. These are all jacks and we're going to connect them in a zigzag pattern kind of which makes each input to as many outputs as we want as long as we don't put a new input in here. So if we put an input in here and we can have output, output, output and then we put another input there to an output, output and then one input, output, output, output. So a very versatile um, passive multiple uh, by Niklas Rönnberg. Uh, it was an amazing design and as soon as I saw it I thought I need to have this just because the versatility of it is amazing. Much better than the other one with just a switch. So, but there's a lot of jacks here. So when it comes to modules like this, it is more about how to put the these components together to uh, make it as easy as possible to solder. So again, all the all the ground should be to should be connected together. So if we somehow could connect these in a good way. It would be really good if I can have them like this and then just have one piece of wire going down the middle putting all the ground jacks together or ground uh, connectors together. I had to print out this beautiful schematics he's done <laughs> just to make sure I do it the correct way. So the tip pin uh, should be connected to the tip pin from in to out and then to the connected tip pin of the second input and that just continues down the line which means in our case that one connected to that one and that one connected to that one down the line. Good thing I do this because I turn it, so this is the input and I put it to the output. Classic me. So let's fix that.
If we instead take the Niklas Sönberg passive multiple, it works like this. You have an input and an output and another output and another output and they are all here and another output and they are all there but if I instead choose to take another input on the third row then these two are one multiplier and these three are one multiplier where this one multiplies to these two and these two multiply to that one multiplies to these two. So the possibilities with the new uh, Niklas Renbay passive multiple is much more versatile than with the normal configuration of passive multiple. And that's how simple that is. Uh, so I have them both in the rack now, but I am going to only keep the Niklas Rundberg version because, well, as you can see, my rack is actually becoming quite full, uh, which is a nice problem, much nicer than when I started this week with only one module and nothing else, which it had been for 20 years almost uh, so this is nice to only have 8 HP I think left um, so I'm going to remove the normal passive multiple for now and probably one mixer as well uh, to cram some more modules in here we still have a lot of modules to make we are after all only in day 3 and this day has one more episode. Uh, these are passive multiples. We have to make active multiples as well, or buffered multiples. Just as we had a unbuffered and buffered mixer, we need a buffered multiple as well for those signals that need that. I hope I showed some of the things that when I loaded all four CV inputs on one output the LEDs for example in the Vectral VCA uh, got really dim so they can't push as much power uh, as you'd like. If you'd like to have one multiple to seven split that might be a bit hard for the system. So. Hope you like this and hope you press the like button to show you like this and that you are already subscribing and following along this build and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!